in terms of the free matching. When we add contracts <coughs> to programs, we are basically at some sort of DNA. So we go with heavy contracts that monitor the precise and rich properties that we want. Oh, shoot. One possible answer is use the rich contract. I thought I had a very loud voice. No? Uh, sorry. Should I start again? No. Okay. So should I go for the heavy contracts that describe the precise and rich properties I want to monitor? Or should I go for efficiency? One answer is use the rich, pro uh, the, the rich heavy contracts during debugging. And then when you deploy your software, just remove them. It will be fast. But as many wise people before me have noted, this is just like turning the airbag off before you t after you buy a car, right? So no protection when you need it. Option contracts offer an alternative. They are basically an extension to the contract library that allows us to switch on and off contract checks at will. What does this mean for the way we manage the overhead of contract checking? It means that instead of thinking which contracts are expensive and removing them, we think about which contract checks have significant overhead on uh, running the program and which one of those we can shut off without making our programs less reliable. So I think the best way to demonstrate what's going on here is to, oh, is to show you an example, to walk you through, actually, an example. So here we have a racket module. It doesn't matter what the code says, right? The only reason it's there is because I wanted to tell you that racket recognizes, uh, that Dr. Racket recognizes that as a module written in racket. And because of that, it knows that it can make yellow or orange the comment and green uh, the constants. How does Dr. Racket do that? It has a particular lecture specific for Racket that guides it on how to pick the colors. And every language in the Racket universe comes with one of these lectures. So the next question is, how does Dr. Racket know uh, which lecture to pick for its language? It has yet another lecture called the module lecture, which has a very simple job. Read the first line, the haslang line of a file, retrieve the language information, and from this language information, tell me which the, is the lecture that I need to use and delegate coloring the rest of the file based uh, using this lexer. The lexers that are both for uh, coloring the contents of the files and both module lexer are basically uh, state machines. And as we know, programming state machines is extremely error prone, especially when we're talking about complicated state machines like this one. So to keep some standards along all the different languages uh, that Dr. Racket can handle, it's a very nice strategy to require that all of the modules, including module lecture, that provide the lecture, they should attach to this uh, lecture a contract that is going to check some property about the lecture. Let's look at a trimmed down version of that lecture C, uh, which is not very far from, in terms of complexity, from the real one. We look at it and it's a simple function contract, a dependent function contract, but the properties it actually checks on the argument and the results are type-like properties. And they look extremely cheap. So we may think that this contract is innocent, that when we are calling lecture, it's not going to have any significant impact on the running time of our programs. But remember that lecture is called for every character on our buffer. So if we have, for instance, a 10,000 lines racket program, we've measured it. And when we have this contract there, 
the overhead is 20%. So how do we make this overhead go away? The answer that I would like to give is use option contracts. And option contracts come with Racket, and you can find them uh, as part of the unstable uh, libraries. How do we turn this lexer into an option contract? We just uh, wrap it with an option C. So what does option C do? It basically tells to the contract system, take the contract, the original contract, create a contract boundary around the lexer, wrap it with whatever things you wrap it to keep track of information about blame and checking. But please, silence the checks. Why do we call it option contract? Because we're, it's an analogy with option contracts from the business world. These are contracts that at some point we are allowed to turn the checks back on. We can do it whenever, whenever we have a value that has a contra, a, an option contract on it. We are allowed to say, now go and check the contracts from now on for me. And this is exactly what we are going to do to fix the problem with, uh, uh, the, to, to reduce the overhead for our lexers. How are we going to do that? First, we start with an observation. Not all lexers are equal. There are some lexers, like Racket's lexer, that have been around for, what, 20 years now? And we know how many bugs we get for them. None, almost, I think. And so we can say we can trust them. On the other side, we have the lexer I wrote last night, and we have no reason to trust it, right? So we can go inside our module lexer, which is uh, the lexer that is going to delegate coloring the rest of the buffer. And right before it delegates coloring to the lexer for the language, we can ask a question. Is the lexer a trusted lexer? If it is a trusted lexer, uh, if it's not a trusted lexer first, then activate the checks. If it is a trusted lexer, waive the contract. Waive basically says, not only I don't want to check the contract, but I'm giving up my right to turn it off, to turn it on again, which means basically remove around the value of the lexer any information that the contract system has stored to make accesses, uh, calls to this function even cheaper. Okay? So this way, we have managed to check contracts only when it really matters, only for untrusted lexers. And if we run now again the same 10,000 line program, we will see that we get just 1% overhead. So as I said, um, option contracts are part of the unstable, lab uh, the unstable uh, libraries of Racket. There you can find many, many features. Not just, it's not only about exercise and uh, wave. Uh, today, I would like to talk briefly about two more before my time runs up. So the first thing I want to say is that trust should never be blind. And when we wrap something with a, a function, a, a contract, we, when we tag a contract as an option contract, we basically say, trust me. Don't run these checks. Run them only when it's possible, when you really, really want them. So in order to give, to quantify a little bit on the amount, to justify a little bit the trust on this option contract, option contracts come also with the notion of a tester. So we can go, for instance, here, and say, I think it's called some tests, but I'm not sure. Uh, what did I do? OK. Yes. So we can go, for instance, and add this tester thing. What is a, the tester? Is a predicate. The moment the contract system is going to apply the contract on the lexer, it's going to run the predicate on the lexer with the contract checks on. So in this arbitrary expression, in this arbitrary predicate, we can perform a limited amount of testing, 
and based on how much testing we, uh, how much, how many tests we run here, we can give some amount of r uh, justification about trusting lectures that come with option C. Uh, for instance, in the actual lecture C that comes with uh, Dr. Racket, we try about uh, 10 inputs of uh, random uh, length of up to 100 characters. The second thing uh, has to do with contracts, option contracts being transferable. For instance, if a component, a module or a class or whatever, has an, a value with an option contract and wants to share this value with one of its peers, either by exporting it again or by passing it as an argument to a function, it has the option to say uh, that it wants to share responsibility for, the for this value with its peers. What does this mean? It means that if at a later stage, one of the clients of the client of the module that has uh, the option value decides to exercise the option and turn contracts on, then both the original module and its client are going to look responsible for that. For instance, this is a failed attempt to do something with the lexer. The lexer had an option contract and passed through another contract boundary and through a transfer. And as you can see here, the contract system identifies multiple parties because of the transfers. And actually, the order in which this uh, these uh, blame labels show up, so as how this option value was transferred from one component to the other. This was the initial one, and this is the second one. So, as I said, to wrap up, uh, option contracts come with tools that give a different way about thinking about going, give a, a different framework about thinking and working with uh, reducing the cost of contract checking. Identify the checks that are, that are okay to remove because they don't affect the reliability of my program. And for those, start contracts off, start contract checking off. For the others, turn it on. So, um, Please try it out. It's an unstable feature. Uh, if you can find use cases, please report them back to us so that we can stabilize uh, and evolve this library. Thanks a lot. Yes, Jay. Oh, that's interesting. It's just a list, actually. Inside. Yeah, uh, it might get cuter. I know. Yeah, it might. It might be a configuration file or something like that. But right now, it's just a list. <laughs>